Hi everybody, it's Christy. Um, I'm here today as part of Beauty Addiction Makeup Artistry um, to help you with your everyday makeup. Um, I've had quite a few of my clients and friends that have asked for um, some help with what they put on their faces every day and how best to layer products and everything. This is very scary for me to do. It's very scary to put your 42 year old face out there um, for other people to look at with no makeup on. Um, so I hope you're not frightened. <laughs> but at the end of everything, I hope that I give you some good tips and tricks and that you learn a little bit about how best to apply your everyday makeup. So let's get started. I'm going to split this up into two parts. Um, the first part is going to be the complexion, obviously, since I have nothing on my face. Um, the very first thing that you want to do is prime your skin. Um, primer is extremely important, not only for the look and the texture and um, the longevity of your makeup, but for how it feels on your face. Um, I am somebody who is more normal to dry um, and with somebody with a little more mature skin, um, I make sure that I try to hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. So I do already have all of my skincare products on. Um, I have on eye cream, I have on a serum, I have on a nice moisturizer um, and I've given those about 15 to 20 minutes to sink in. Um, you don't want to just Put your moisturizer and everything on and then slap your makeup right on your face because it'll slide right off. So you want, you do want to give that skincare a little bit of time um, to be able to penetrate and really do its job before you go to put makeup on top. Um, the first thing I'm going to go in with is my NYX Hydra Touch Primer. Um, you don't need very much primer. I usually like to use about, oh, about a nickel size amount. And so I'm going to put a little of that in my hands and then spread that all over the face. Everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I am somebody who suffers from quite a bit of under eye dryness, so I make sure that I have lots and lots of hydration under there. Um, but I do have dry patches pretty much all over, so it's something that I have to make sure that I hydrate constantly. Um, now a hydrating primer like that does feel more lightweight, it does feel more gel-like, and it doesn't really do anything for the texture of your skin, um, for things like fine lines, pores, um, bumps of any sort that you have on your skin. Um, so I do like to use, after I've let that sink in for a second, I do like to use a second primer, especially in the areas where I have more texture, um, especially here through the center of the face where most of us have pore issues around the nose and on, on the sides of the cheeks. Um, I do have quite a bit of expression lines on my forehead, so I like to put those that on there as well. And then I have some texture on the sides down here from old acne marks from when I was younger. Um, so what I'm going to go in with now is the NYX No Filter Primer. Um, it's a very, it's kind of a silicone-y feeling primer. does feel very, very good on the skin, but it does have more of that dimethicone kind of a feel to it. So um, with anything that is more smoothing of a primer, you do want to press that into the skin more. I kind of press and swipe as much as I possibly can, but I have plenty of texture there, trust me, that needs a little help. So that's that step. Okay. So now that I've given that skincare and those primers a couple of minutes to sink in, I'm going to go in with foundation. Um, I do have a new obsession in, with my foundation routine. Um, I found this brand new, it's from CoverGirl, the Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. This stuff is incredible. It's got SPF 20. It's very lightweight on the skin. It's more of a natural satin skin-like finish. Um, I find that it wears all day long and even with normal to dry skin, um, not everything does that for me. So I do love, love, love this foundation. Um, so I'm going to take a little bit of that on the back of my hand here. And I am going to mix in one other kind of foundation because I have been out in the sun and been self tanning my uh, chest and arm area for a little while here. So that color is a little bit light. So I am just going to use one little dollop of my Urban Decay Naked Skin Foundation, which is in my darkest summer color, which is 7.0. And I'm just going to mix those together here on the back of my hand. 
get all of the color mixed in well. And then what I like to do is start in the middle of the face and just kind of spread it all over basically. I need to tuck this hair back or I'm gonna end up with foundation in my hair. And you don't need a lot of this foundation. I know this might look like a lot, but I have, uh, it was about a pump and a half um, of the one and a half a pump of the other. So that does tend to cover the whole face. I don't like things really heavy, especially in this heat with 90 degree heat right now. Um, the way I'm gonna blend that in is with my Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. This is quite damp. Um, I did put this underneath um, the sink and I squeezed it out about oh, 10, 11, 12 times. I mean, I like mine really, really damp. Um, the big advantage to using a damp sponge, not only does it impart some extra hydration and moisture into your skin, but it also does this kind of a push-pull thing when it comes to um, complexion products, especially liquid complexion products. It puts down the makeup, but at the same time, anything that is excess on the skin, it tends to pull it back away, which is really nice. Um, I'm somebody that, like, like I said, with more mature skin, um, if I use anything that is too thick or too heavy, um, whether it be with consistency or coverage, um, the makeup tends to collect, especially because I'm quite an expressive person. <laughs> um, it will tend to collect in the places where my face moves the most. So in my nasal label folds, um, in the expression lines in my forehead, that sort of thing, um, it will start to collect there. Um, not only are beauty blenders or any soft, cushy sponge like this that are damp um, is good for makeup application, but it's also really good for touch-ups. You can use this not only for foundation and concealer, um, I will show you a little bit later. You can use it for powder application, um, even damp. It's the best way to do it. Um, or you can um, use it to touch up later on in the day, even if it's just still slightly, slightly damp from before and you have oils that are peeking through or um, if you have any kind of makeup that's just kind of moved around or if you have blush or highlight or something that is a little too pronounced and too out there, um, then you can just kind of dab over it with your beauty blender and it will take care of it for you. Um, you do, instead of want to swipe, you do want to pounce that on the skin. Um, the more you press it into the skin, the more the product becomes one with the skin. Um, also, the more that it tends to just look more like natural skin um, and not just sit on top. So that does help quite a bit. I do tend to kind of pounce it on over everywhere. I try not to put a lot of um, foundation or anything like that under my eyes. Like by the time I get to this area of my face, it's when with just the, the leftover residue, the tiny little bit of pigment that's left on the sponge. Um, because if you're somebody like me and you have um, more hollow under eyes or dry under eyes and you end up putting too much product underneath there, it's just going to make you look like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Crypt Keeper, excuse me. It'll end up making you look like you're 190 years old. I have made that mistake one too many times in my life. Um, I'm somebody who doesn't really sleep. <laughs> Having a uh, child in the Navy and a teenage daughter in college and a type 1 diabetic son tends to keep me from sleeping well most nights, but hey, you do what you gotta do, right? Okay, so now that the foundation's done, we're going to move on to the under eye. Okay, so for the under eye, for somebody like me, who does deal with a lot of hollowness here underneath the eyes from lack of sleep um, and from dryness, I have to take a couple of different steps to make myself look like I've actually gotten some sleep. Um, so the very first product I like to put down is the Becca Brightening Under Eye Corrector. This is a peachy corrector. Um, anything with a peach 
slash orange undertone depending on how light to deep of a skin tone you have. Um, the opposite on the color wheel of blue, which is what most of my under eye darkness is underlying color wise. Um, the blue and orange are opposite on the color wheel from each other. So therefore the peach in this corrector helps cancel out the blue that's in, the, in my under eyes from lack of sleep and being 42. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of that on a brush. This is a Morphe S11, it's a synthetic brush. You do only wanna use um, synthetic or man-made hair brushes when it comes to any kind of a cream product. Um, you only wanna use natural hair brushes um, with things like powders. Um, otherwise it'll gunk your brushes up. And I am gonna apologize, I have to get up close because I'm old and have bad eyes here. But the, where I'm going to put this is just in this inner corner where I'm most dark and where that hollow part of my under eye is. So I just kind of put that in there. And then I'm also quite dark on this outer part of my eye. So I dab a little bit of that there and then I just kind of follow it underneath the lash line. Looks a little crazy, I realize. Then I go back in with the Beauty Blender again and just tap that out. I do have my little mirror down here because I couldn't figure out any other way to set this all up where you didn't have a mirror straight in your face. YouTubers and people that do this stuff on a regular basis, I don't know how they do it, but I have a lot of respect for them. Oh, see, and I'm being bad right now. I was using my middle finger underneath my eyes. Little tip, and do as I say, not as I do, because sometimes I catch myself doing this and I'm like, why do I do this to myself? When you're working with anything on the under eye, whether it be patting in an eye cream or putting under eye concealer or tapping anything like that in, you always wanna use your ring finger. Your ring finger has the lightest amount of pressure of all of your fingers on your hand. So um, with the delicate skin of the under eye and you not wanting to tug or pull at that too much, um, you do always wanna use your ring finger for that. So that was my fault. Um, and this is very hard to do when you're my age and wear bifocals and everything else and trying to do it this far away from my mirror. Normally I have to have my mirror right up in my face. Sorry, I'm gonna to try to hold this down here. So I start with the Beauty Blender and then sometimes depending on how dry my under eyes are, sometimes I need to use the warmth of my finger to kind of warm that product up a little bit and kind of disperse it where I need it to be. And then I just go over it with the Beauty Blender to tap that in. Give me a little bit more moisture. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side. So right here, in that darkest, scary Skeletor hollow I have underneath my eye. So just in that area where it's most dark. And then I'm gonna go in with my ring finger and disperse that a little bit. Why is it that we as women make like the weirdest faces known to man when we're putting makeup on? Don't expect me to be cute while I'm doing this, guys. Because it just won't happen. <laughs> okay. Now that that's where it needs to be, this will help pick up any excess, if there's any on there. There we go. Okay, under eye corrector on. Another big tip that I give a lot of um, my clients is that to make sure that you're exfoliating your skin on a regular basis. I've seen a lot of people with issues either with you know, build up from oil or dry dead skin or things like that, especially around this area of the face, 
mostly down the center. A lot, not a lot of people have it on their cheeks, but if you're not getting those dead skin cells off there on a regular basis, not only will the texture of your skin not be as smooth, but at the same time, it also, um, your face kind of sucks up all the moisture out of your makeup. So it doesn't matter how much moisturizer or primer or anything you put on if you haven't prepped your skin properly. So the best thing I can tell anybody to do is to spend time and money if need be on your skincare. Um, skincare is the biggest part of makeup, honestly. Um, makeup can only take things so far. And if you don't have a decent canvas underneath there, or if you're sleeping in your makeup every night or anything like that, which I always warn people, don't do that. It ages you two days every time you sleep with your makeup on. Yeah, nobody needs that. Um, anyway, you need to take your makeup off every night. Make sure that you're cleansing and moisturizing, exfoliating two to three times a week. That does make a huge, huge difference when it comes to how your makeup looks. Um, the other thing is using things like eye cream and moisturizer. A lot of oily women like to um, trick themselves and think that they shouldn't be using moisturizer, which in fact, what it does is if you're not moisturizing your skin on a regular basis, even though you're oily, even though you're seeing a lot of shine on your skin and you might feel like a greased chicken or something like that, it's, it's something where your skin can be oily but dehydrated at the same time. So if you're not imparting enough moisture to your skin on a regular basis every single day, um, then your oil glands go into hyperdrive and they are trying to fix the problem for you. So therefore you'll end up with a lot oilier skin than what you would normally have. So even if you are an oily skin girl, which if you are, I'm jealous, um, oily skin girls don't get wrinkles as fast, bless your souls. Um, but even if you're oily, you need to make sure that you're putting a moisturizer on your skin on a regular basis. Um, you're not going to want to use something as heavy as what I do. Um, I'm somebody who needs every last bit of moisture that I can. I will use facial oils. I will use coconut oil. I will use everything under the sun to try to keep enough moisture in my skin. Um, use a nice light gel moisturizer um, that will still give you the moisture that your skin needs, but at the same time, you're not going to end up um, with a real shiny face and everything during the day. So it is different. Um, whoops, hold on one second. I think my husband's texting me. Yeah, I'll be right back. Okay, tell my husband not to interrupt us, all right? He's always doing that kind of stuff when I'm doing my makeup. Anyway, we're going to move on to concealing. Um, concealing and highlighting. Um, what I like to use for my under eyes for concealer is the Tarte Shape Tape. Um, this is one of the most full coverage crazy concealers you will ever have in your life. Um, but one of the reasons why I like it so much is because I have such dry under eyes that I can't really set my under eyes with powder like a lot of women would. Um, if I do that, again, I look like the Crypt Keeper. Crypt Keeper. Good Lord, I can't talk. Um, I look like the Crypt Keeper. If I do that, I end up looking like I'm 190 years old. So um, I figure 42 is good enough. I don't need to look any older than I already am. So take a little bit of my chart Shape Tape, and I use the color light right now. I probably need to get a little bit darker one. But I just put the tiniest little bit um, in those key spots. If you watch a YouTube tutorial, and God bless them, all those 20 year old girls, they can take this Tarte Shape Tape and they can just go to town and they are putting streaks and streaks and streaks of it on their face. That is way too full coverage. That is way too much makeup for me. Um, I know that I love my makeup, but good Lord, like it's too much, too much is too much. Um, and I am feeling quite dry underneath my eyes today, so I did just re-wet my beauty blender a little bit. I'm using the Mario Badescu Facial Spray with Aloe, Herbs, and Rose Water. This is something that I do like to use for a refresher during the day if my skin's feeling really dry, if my makeup's feeling powdery. Um, it's great. It's very, very hydrating. It's very soothing to the skin. I can put that on before makeup, after makeup, during makeup throughout the day, before I go to bed at night, that stuff's great. And you can get a huge bottle like this at Ulta for like 12 bucks, so can't really beat it. So I'm gonna take my 
beauty blender again and dab in that under eye concealer where I need it. And some days this will take care of everything that I need. Um, other days I am so dark in here that I need a little more help. But honestly, I use such a thin layer of that. And to me, that's part of the trick. If you're, if you're layering products and things like that, not using a lot at a time is, is the big, big key. You can always add more. You cannot take away. So the more you use little bits at a time and just get it to where it works instead of going like full bore and feeling like a drag queen by the time you're done, then you'll be better off in the end. Okay, so there's the under eye concealer. And then the Tarte Shape Tape I don't like to use all over my face. Number one, it's um, it's expensive. Number two, it's full coverage. Um, so I like to use something a little more lightweight and hydrating around my face. I've got a couple different ones that I love. I love the Maybelline Age Rewind and Neutralizer. That one's awesome. Um, always looks natural on the skin and it's cheap. It's fantastic. If, if there's anything that you girls learn about me, learn that I am not a makeup snob. Um, I am somebody who I don't care whether it's Chanel or Wet n Wild. If it works, it works. And that's what I go for in a makeup product. You will see that in my professional kit. You will see that in my kit at home. I spend where I need to. And don't get me wrong, I used to work at Sephora. I absolutely love my high-end makeup products. But at the same time, it's not necessary to spend all that money on a regular basis on stuff that you use every day unless you can't find anything else that works. So to me, I spend where I need to and I save where I can. So what I use for highlighting right now is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Concealer. I wish I could do all of this just in my camera, but I kind of cannot see. So because I am so dark there, a lot of times I will take one more line of it right there just to brighten it up. Um, this is kind of the same concept of highlight and contouring. Anything that's lighter and matte will um, be brought forward. Shimmer too, but I don't want to put shimmer under my under eyes. Um, anything that is lighter will be brought forward. Anything that is darker and matte with no shimmer will be brought back. So um, I also like to put a little of this because not only do I get red around my nose, but my nasal labial folds are lovely. I also like to highlight above my cupid's bow and right down the center of my nose and I always get dark on the sides of my mouth. It's that whole center of the face thing. We as women, we have more redness in the center of our faces thanks to wonderful estrogen. There's so many things that we end up dealing with that the men don't simply because of estrogen. Aren't we lucky? <laughs> but then again I just tap that in with that same beauty blender I do love this over the top of the regular beauty blender um, because of the flat side that this has um, not only are these much cheaper these are by um, a company called Real Techniques that you can get at Ulta Target Walgreens you can get them pretty much anywhere anymore um, and they're made by two fantastic makeup artists um, on YouTube and in the UK. They're Pixie Woo, Sam and Nick. Um, they are a set of sisters that created all the Real Techniques brushes and sponges and they are fantastical. I love watching them. I think I've been watching them for like six years. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Swallowed wrong. <coughs> But one of the reasons why I love this so much is because of this flat side, you can really get in your under eye and do what you need to do. That pointed side can be helpful too. It just depends on your eye shape, but I absolutely love that. Okay, so the next thing that I personally do, this is where I have to start tricking the eye a little bit more because of my lovely under eyes. So um, a powder that I absolutely love, which is not cheap 
I've had this for quite some time. The nice thing is about these, they might be on the expensive side, but they last forever because I have used the heck out of them and they do have a dent, but they're not gone yet. And I think I've had them for over two years. Yeah, two years, I think. Um, but these are the ambient um, lighting powders by Hourglass. This one is in diffused light. Um, it's kind of a light pale yellow. Um, and the difference with the ambient lighting powders is they're very, very, very finely milled. They don't really look like powder on the skin and they're not super matte and chalky. So they do impart a little bit of life and um, dewiness to the skin. It just looks more skin-like. Um, so I use this in those areas towards the center of my face that I want to bring forward. So instead of this being a bag, like what a lot of people have, mine is all hollow there. So I will take this and I don't take this all the way up underneath the eye because this is where I'm super, super dry is in this area right here. So I just take this powder And towards this center part of my face where I just put that concealer and then I just take the excess and do on this outer part here tap my brush off I put that powder down to set where I put that concealer and I do use this lighter color there because it does help brighten my skin some and soften the look of those deeper areas. It's not perfect. Won't ever be perfect, but it's better than it was when I started. Okay, and then so for the rest of the face, I use a little bit different of a color for that. This is another one of the ambient lighting powders by Hour Hourglass. This is called Dim Light. This is just more of like a beigey skin tone color, and I really don't use much of this. I'll tap it in there, tap it off, use a big fluffy brush. This is another Real Techniques brush, and I just barely sweep that over the skin. And I don't really even do that to set the makeup because the makeup can kind of set itself. But I find that if I don't use just a little bit and I haven't dipped back into the powder again, um, I just kind of disperse it. Um, even just sometimes rubbing the brush hairs over your face can help take up some of the moisture in the makeup. But I find that if I don't do this, my bronzer and whatnot can go on more patchy because if your skin is tacky in a certain area, and like I said, I do use a lot of moisture products. Um, if it's tacky in one of those areas, then it can go on kind of patchy and skip a little bit and not look quite as smooth. So then I go on to bronzing. Um, I am in love with this no number seven bronzer in the color Caramel. Um, number seven is a UK brand that you can buy at Target and at Ulta. Um, I have an entire drawer full of bronzers and whatnot. I have some really expensive ones, some really cheap ones. I tend to kind of, depends on the time of year as to what bronzer I like the most. But this one, just when I was the fairest of fair during the winter time, and now it still works. And it just goes on so nice and smooth. So with bronzer, and dip that brush in, tap off your excess. That's a big rule with pretty much any brush you want to use. And then we just go around the perimeters of the face. So up here in the temple area, I do that because I have a five head <laughs> and it tends to help shade that just a little bit. Bronzer is a very important step. It is a step that a lot of women skip, I feel. Um, but if you are somebody who uses a cover coverage product like foundation on your skin, and you're getting that nice even canvas all the way down, then if you don't impart some warmth and some dimension back into your skin, it can make your skin look very flat and it can make your face look whiter. I don't know anybody on the planet that wants to do that. Um, but this just kind of gives your skin some color, brings back the cheekbones a little bit, helps with the five head. I tend to just run that little bit of excess over my nose. 
and that's it for that. Um, on a regular basis, I do not contour every day. Um, it depends. It depends on how chubby I feel like my face looks that day or how pale I am. Um, but I will add that in here just to kind of show you what I've done on a regular basis if I can find my brush here. Um, so all I use is a little angled brush like this so it can fit right into that cheekbone area. Um, you want to use something that's nice and matte, which means no shimmer, um, and something that is on either the neutral to cool side. You do not want to use an orangey colored bronzer um, as a contour because what you're trying to do there is mimic a shadow. So um, if you use a big stripe of orange right there, it's not really going to look like an actual shadow on your face. So what I've been using lately, this is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I am using the lighter color of the two simply because I like it to... There's light bronzer and then bronzer. Very, very, very inventive makeup names, I know. Um, I do have both. They smell delicious. They smell like you're on vacation in Maui. It's kind of great. Um, but I don't want my contour to be very, very harsh. So again, sorry, I have to pick this up. Otherwise, I won't be able to see. So right here in the hollow of the cheekbone, if you're going from kind of the top of the ear down along the side of your cheekbone here, like if you were to suck in your face, right here is where you want to contour. And you really only want to take it from the top of your ear to about here, this outer part of your eye. If you bring it down too far, it can give your face a very masculine look. Um, that's actually a trick that um, a lot of drag queens have used in the in the past. So you just want to start at that contour area and blend up. And if you see my eyes going all over the place, I apologize. I did have double eye muscle surgery in November, and so every once in a while they get a little they get a little out of hand, so depends on which way I'm turning my head. So just right here in the hollow of the cheekbone and blend upward. You don't ever want to blend down because that'll drag your face down. And I am somebody who always has to do this because I was born with the Steinhauser Schnauzer, as we call it. My mom's side of the family's nose. They are all wide on the end of the nose. I do always contour my nose a little bit. So the way that I do that, I kind of start here at the top just with a very small, tiny brush. This is a little dual-ended brush, soft brush, because I don't like anything too crazy. And I just kind of follow that line of my nose. Whoops, I needed more product than that. Tapped off too much. So I just kind of follow that line. And this will be different for everybody. Just depends on the shape of your nose as to where you need shading and highlighting and whatnot. But because of the way my nose is, I make like a little arrow right here. And then I do the same on the bottom. And that tends to kind of help cut how wide I am down here. And then I follow it down just to keep that shaded. And then I use the other side of the brush just to kind of blend that out a little bit. Try not to use too much in the first place, but... Okay, and then the next thing that I actually do is highlighting rather than blush. Um, I am somebody who you will hardly ever see me go out of the house without highlight on my face. It is my favorite part of makeup application. I think that it changes everybody's face for the better. Even if you're an oily girl, I think you can highlight. You can use mattifying products everywhere else on your face and then use the, the shimmer and the sparkle only where you need it. So I'm going to use um, Becca Champagne Pop, which is my absolute favorite of all time, made by Jaclyn Hill. It's like the perfect peachy pink. I use this on my brides all the time. It gives the prettiest glow. So I just use a little fluffy brush like this. You can even use like a fluffy eyeshadow brush or anything like that. And where you want to put your highlight is right here at the tops of your cheekbones. So you just, where your face would naturally catch the light, 
That way with the um, contour that you have down here and then the highlight up here, it helps not only give your skin that really pretty glow, but it also kind of lifts the face and lifts the cheekbones. And same on the other side. And then I always do the Cupid's bow, which most of this gets knocked away when I go to put my lip product on, but, and then I will do just that very tip of my nose and down the center. And that also helps kind of impart a little extra healthy glow and, and if you've, I've ever taken it too far with this, I'll just go right back in with my beauty blender and just pounce over the top of it with kind of the side of it where it's more clean. Um, not to put foundation or anything like that over it, but just to kind of tone it down a little bit. Um, so I do the highlighter and then I will always go back in with my bronzer brush and just kind of no more product on it. Just go over that. That way that area is more blended because I really don't like that look of the lovely big streak of highlighter down the face. And then I'm going to put a little blush on. This is the Sephora Bake Blush in Mango Beam. Absolutely love this color. Love peachy coral colors for summertime. I think it makes everybody look so nice and healthy. This one has more of a matte color on one side and a little bit of a shimmery color on the other side. I think I own every single color of these blushes. If you want to know how I feel about them, I think they're fantastic. Um, anyway, just on a small fluffy Mor Morphe brush, this is a M405. Um, you do always want to start here at the apple of your cheeks and kind of work back. You don't want to go too close to your nose. Um, if you go too close to your nose, you kind of want to use the, the two finger rule, okay? You put your two fingers here. You don't want to be any closer than that to your nose with your blush because otherwise it can kind of distort the shape of your face. So just where you smile, that little apple of the cheek. I even taught my granddaughter Bradley this when I bought her makeup for her birthday. We dab, dab, dab. Tap, 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 smile, start here, work your way back. Um, and you don't want to go too low. Um, those of us like me who are in our 40s, if you want to kind of lift your face a little bit, you want to kind of start up here and work your way up. You don't want to go straight back like this because then it'll kind of drag your cheekbones down. So if you just kind of start here. Work your way up and back. And that way, by putting down the highlighter first, you're kind of blending your blush over the top of the highlighter so the highlighter peeks through underneath, which is a look that I prefer rather than putting the highlighter up here. If you ever have trouble forgetting where to place contour blush highlight. The um, trick that I always taught my clients, either when I do makeup lessons with Beauty Addiction or back when I worked at Sephora, I always told them, think Neapolitan ice cream, chocolate, strawberry, vanilla. It works well. <laughs> Little things like that can help you remember your makeup application. I say whatever works. I'm a firm believer in whatever works. Let's see, that works. That's good enough, I think. And then um, another step that I think a lot of people skip at the end of their complexion makeup is setting spray. I cannot tell you how important I think setting spray is, um, especially for somebody um, that uses any kind of powder on your face um, whatsoever. If you use any kind of powder, a setting spray will not only um, take away that powdery look and kind of it kind of helps meld all of your products together and helps them look more natural and skin like um, it can impart more of a healthy glow um, depending on what setting spray you use it can make your makeup last longer so to me it depends on the day it depends on how long I'm gonna wear my makeup or whether I care whether it's gonna come off or not um, whether I'm just dry and need moisture so like I said, sometimes I'll just use this Mario Badescu, um, my new favorite, which you can actually use this before or after makeup um, to prep or set it, is the new Morphe Prep and Set. Best spray in the history of life because it's an aerosol. Smells oh so very good. 
And if you're like me and you get a little warm from time to time, it can help cool you off. Um, that one does set quite well. Another one that I've found um, that I really love is the Pure Bliss Makeup Setting Spray. This one has, what is it? Organic Tea Extracts, DM, DMAE. Um, it's on the more natural side, but it, it works really, really well. It does have a little bit different of a sprayer. I mean, it's, it's more of a pump. I'm going to put some of this on too. You watch me. I'm somebody I can setting spray all day long. I think it feels so good. The only problem is when you have a bob haircut like this and you use texturizing products and then you use setting spray and your hair gets a little crazy. So um, another one that I love is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Um, I use that on my brides constantly. Um, if you're somebody that has any skin type and need to lock your makeup in, that will help. Um, it does have um, temperature control technology in it that helps, you know, if you're dancing at your wedding reception or out at a summer barbecue or whatever and you want to keep your face cooler and you don't want your makeup to all come off, something like Urban Decay All Nighter will help with that. Um, another one that I love is the Pixie Hydrating uh, Milky Mist. This one's a little more on the mattifying side of it when it comes to finish, but it's still very hydrating because it has hyaluronic acid and black oat um, and it says youth preserving mist. That's all you got to do to sell something to me. Tell me it's going to keep me youthful. Okay, so that is the complexion makeup completed. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this. I know I still look a little scary because I don't have any eye makeup on, but I'm going to do that next and I hope you'll come back for the next video. If you have any questions, please comment um, or message me and I will be happy to answer those for you. Thanks for hanging out guys. Bye.